of the Odom in Gainesville, Florida, O'Connell Center. A tough place for any opponent, especially if you're named Kentucky. The Wildcats and the Gators have shared the SEC East the last two seasons. Tonight, they're in a must-win situation, both coming off weekend losses. Here's how they look for Tubby Smith and Billy Donovan. Some changes in the lineup tonight. Chuck Hayes and Eric Daniels will start for Kentucky with Hawkins, Prince, and Estill. Haslam and Bonner. Ronnie King, a walk-on, will start his first game for the Gators tonight. Orion Green and Justin Hamilton round out the starting five. I got a feeling we're going to see some names called Nelson and Bogans. There could be a little message being sent loud and clear. For the first time in 120 games, a walk-on starts for Florida. The last one to do it was Dan Williams for Billy Donovan. Back in 88, he was a heck of a shooter. Ronnie King is a scrapper and one of the crowd favorites, and he gets his first start in the orange and blue tonight. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale, a key game in the SEC as Super Tuesday is about to heat up in the O-Dome. Gerald Boudreaux's got it in hand, and Estill knocks it into the backcourt. King is the first to touch, and Florida will bring it to the front court in the person of Hamilton. Well, last night we were in a great environment down here in Fog Island Fieldhouse, and tonight we have another great environment with the Rowdy Reptiles. Here's Bonner on top. Haslam, they're going to look for Haslam early in this game. Three straight double-doubles for Udonis. Here he is on the drive, has to kick it back outside, and Hayes got a piece of it to knock it into the backcourt. Eight on the shot clock now, as Hamilton will have to be aware of that. A double team. Bonner's going to have to throw one up there. Just got it away. And got it! Uh-oh, uh-oh, that's a bad sign for Kentucky when a shot like that goes down, Brad. Here comes the full court trap, typical frenetic style by the Gators. They're going to call that shot of Bonner's a two. The officials had a difference of opinion. They put two on the board. They have a difference. They can go to the monitor to make sure you're allowed to utilize it this year for a two and three. The official on the far side had both arms up. Gerald Boudreaux looked at the scoreboard and said two. He was the closest man to the action. Prince on the drive. That's a Whistle, great, wave it off. That's a great sign, though. At least he's attacking the basket. They want him to get a little bit more aggressive offensively. Orion Green. Green picks up the foul. Green gives him a lot of versatility, Billy Donovan. Donovan and Smith, very familiar with one another, having served on a staff at Kentucky under Rick Pitino. They now have put three points on the board. They had three initially. Now one scoreboard's got three, one's got two. They just switched them both back to two. We'll get this figured out in a second. They've had both scores on the board, and both officials have talked to the scorer's table. They may have to go over one more time and get this thing straightened out. They now officially have two up on both scoreboards. Billy Donovan working the sideline at his sixth season. He and Tubby Smith of Kentucky and Rick Pitino's staff at Kentucky. So two guys that played a lot of pickup basketball together and they're very good friends. But in this case, for a couple hours, that friendship goes away. Yeah, both guys fierce competitors. Also on that staff was Ralph Wooler, the Holy Cross, and Herb Sendick. We'll see tomorrow night with that improving NC State team, 16 and 4. Here's Prince inside. Good move by Tayshawn Prince, and as Dick Tayshaun said, Prince. he appears, at least in the early going, to be more aggressive. Well, he was aggressive when we had him against Duke, and then he seemed a little passive. I think the one area of the game that he's got to improve on is move without the basketball, something we talked about last night with Kareem Rush. Bonner looking into Hassel. And whistle and a foul. It'll be on Esther. Haslam's been so tough inside, as you said, three consecutive double doubles this year. First time in the SEC since a guy by the name of the clerk did it. Florida back in the mid 90s. Bonner, double team. Nice ball movement. Nobody seems to want to take a shot. Trying to get overload against that zone. Green takes a three. Bonner trying to keep it alive, but it's Prince with the rebound. Prince got those long arms. What a wingspan. Missed him at about 6-9. Estill almost shot the three, but it's Daniels. Nice feed by Marquis Estill. Well, Daniels playing and also Hayes because they give him a lot of energy. Very aggressive players, and they're trying to get a little more toughness. Tubby told me before the game, he said, we got to get some toughness. 
Well, they're already Kentucky off to a better start than they were against Alabama. They started the game 0 for 8. They started the second half 0 for 10. And they had three dry spells of four minutes or more without any points. So already tonight their offense looks better as they lead by two. And that's been a problem for them in those games they lost, scoring points, point production, shooting the basketball. Prince trying to set a pick for Hawkins. And he walks with it. Hawkins is a young guy that they like to play off of. They like to give him that perimeter shot. As a look at Tubby, one of the superstars in the coaching fraternity. 98 wins that national championship. Did a phenomenal job at Tulsa and Georgia as well. Averaging almost 28 wins per season wow. at Kentucky. But that's kind of in jeopardy now. Never since 59. Eight trips to the Final Four for Kentucky. They've never had a team lose more than four games among that grouping. And so that's not good if Kentucky fans are looking at the 13-5 and five record right now and saying, we're going back eventually. Might not happen. They're clawing for everything they have right now because they're at 500 in the conference. Kentucky lost three games at home already. There's Keith Bogans, normally a starter, and a little bit of a message maybe being sent by Tubby to his quote-unquote two stars. Sean Prince and Keith Bogans. Well, Bogans has just got to play and have a little fun and attack the basket. Instead of thinking about shooting the three, he's got to go back to his strength. There's Nelson who didn't start, but his first shot is true. Well, you know we're going to see a lot of Nelson. Florida needs him. They can't win without Nelson. He's too vital to their perimeter game. And an offensive foul on Hawkins. Nelson has scored 20 or more in four of the last five games. Look at Orlando Tubby Smith. So it's a one-point Gator lead. They got the ball, and we're near the 16-minute mark opening half. And a man defense by Kentucky. Nelson again. This one goes to. I'll tell you something, Coach. You going to give me some PT, Coach? Coach, you think I got some playing time tonight? Three-pointer number 58 and 59 on the year, and another steal by Hamilton. Has to fight to get it back. Bonner, the outlet. Nelson may pull up again. No, he tried to dish to Haslam. He tried and to make the spectacular pass. Should have thrown the little simple bounce pass. Just a little over four minutes in. It's the Gators by four. Uh, how are we going to win on Sunday? No brains. Police. Oh, changez mon discours au musée, s'il vous plaît. Oui. But for really smart, check out this Palm handheld from CompUSA. It manages your calendar, gets email. Oh, here's one. The Fed needs me to lecture on our monetary system. Again? CompUSA, where America buys technology. Buy select Palm handhelds at CompUSA and get a 16 meg expansion card free. When reviewing the Lexus LS 430, Automobile Magazine said, no car in this class has more inviting leather, a more comfortable ride, a superior stereo, or a more logical navigation system. Perhaps this is why, for the second year in a row, Automobile Magazine has named the LS430 the best luxury car over $40,000. To its owners, it's the best luxury sedan in the world. The LS430, at your Lexus dealer. Florida, the early lead, 8-4 to four, over Kentucky here at the O-Dome as rivalry week continues here on Super Tuesday. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale with you from O'Connell Center. Tough place to play. It's hot, it's rowdy, it's Billy, it's Tubby, and it's uh, it means a lot this time because in the SEC East, here's two teams trying to catch Georgia right now. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It's also tough because Florida usually puts a talented team on the floor as well with guys like Nelson and Haslam. But you're right. When you talk about the standings right now, I should take a look at Georgia. Jimmy Herrick, what a surprise, sitting there at 5-2. and two. Florida 4-2 and two, and Kentucky 3-3. Three and three. If they lose their fourth game early, that's unbelievable. Early in the game, a guy that didn't even start for Florida is Brett Nelson, and he made his presence felt in a hurry, Dick. Yeah, didn't waste any time. He's coming off five games in the last five. He's had 420 or more games, and he hits his first two long-range jump shots. Bonner hit a shot just inside the line, so it's been long range for Florida to lead here early as they've gone three for six from the floor. 
You know, Brad, you take a look at Kentucky's five losses, and there's one common denominator as you look there at shooting percentages. In their five losses, they are 25 for 111 shooting the three. That's 22.5%. Well, Tayshawn Prince, for instance, in their wins, shoots about 39% from outside the arc. In their five losses, he shot 20% outside the arc. So, so they need that. And there's Prince as we talk about him. He comes up with a steal. Fitch back on the floor. So is Bogans. Bogans did not start either. Well, Fitch didn't start because he came late to a film session. He was 10 minutes late. Tubby Smith has discipline. He's in charge. Whistle and he stepped on the baseline. See, I don't think it's asking too much for guys to be punctual to be on time. I respect a guy like that. Tubby says, hey, we have a program. You got to do it the right way. Tubby, his fifth season at Kentucky. There's Keith Bogans, one of the leading scorers last year. 26 times he led the club in scoring, but he's really been struggling with the exception of the Notre Dame game with his shot like that. He had 29 on his floor last year against Florida. Here's another guy who didn't even play in the last game for Florida, James White, the freshman, and he comes up with an air ball on his first attempt. And James White was an academic reason. Didn't stay in a class. They were very upset about it. Billy Donovan sent him a message. They lost a tough win to Arkansas. Arkansas is a team that can go on and win that SEC in tournament time. He proved it two years ago. David Lee, the freshman. He's very versatile. That's the rebound, a very active player. He and White have big time upscale talent. Here's Prince with well, three that goes. That's good news. I'll tell you one thing, Brad. He's thinking shot tonight. He's playing a little bit more aggressively offensively. 10 7 Gators here in the opening five and a half minutes. Double team, triple team on Hassel. That leaves Lee alone. And as he went up, he's fouled. Marquise Estelle blocked the shot, but Lee attacked the basket. He can use either hand. He's about a St. Louis, very active player. Diaper dandy. There's a double up. They're going to find the open guy. He comes up with the loose ball, and he attacks the basket. There's the contact across the arm by Marquise. You're talking about Lee, a guy who broke his wrist as a sophomore. He's a natural left-hander and taught himself to play as right-handed as he was on that last drive. And as you see, he goes to the free-throw line to the left. He got the roll. So sometimes injuries can make you a better player. Jules Kamara checks in for Kentucky. And Orion Green checks back in for the Gators. Where has Kamara scored? But I did some research. 42 minutes and he hasn't scored a point. Yep. They got to get some points. You know, people don't realize how much they really miss Jason Parker. Right. He you gave him a physical presence down in that low post that was so special. He'll be there next year with Antoine Barber, a great junior college player. Bogan's nice spin to the baseline. Missed the shot in close, though, and it's Haslam to clear it off for the Gators. That's where he's effective now, utilizing his strength in his body on the inside, posting. Nice feed, freshman to freshman, but Lee had it stuck, and here comes Kentucky. Bogans all the way against Nelson. Off the glass, still can't get it to drop, but Prince will keep it alive as he's fouled by Haslam. At least Bogans is attacking the basket. He's aggressive right now. He's taking the ball to the goal rather than standing on a perimeter trying to shoot threes. I'm not going to watch here. Daniels coming over defensively. There's the rotation. There's the block. So Bogans will inbound for Kentucky as they trail by four. Changing defenses right now by Florida. Go to the zone. Kamara. A lot of people, top. A lot of people are let Kentucky have to shoot that perimeter shot. Good oh. feed, Prince to Kamara. He must have hurt us. He finally got on the board after 42 minutes. That's right. Jules says, hey, what do you mean? I could score. He looks so good against Duke. I mean, he looked like a star was coming out. With five block shots, 10 points, 11 boards in that one. Ronald Collis down on the low block to Lee. A nice kick out. Good ball movement. Lee Green open. Got it. Wide open. They love to shoot the three. A little Billy ball. He learned it from Rick Pitino and the Bambinos down here at Kentucky. It's their 136th three-pointer of the year. What a momentum builder we've talked so often about what the three-point shot can do to a game. Last night we saw Missouri stay in the first half against Kansas by virtue of the three-point shot or it wouldn't have been close. They knocked down eight of those to stay on top, stay right there one point down. And then the second half, we got an A-plus clinic for out of Kansas. He did. Fitch had it blocked inside by Kohler. Nelson, I was going to say jump stop. He didn't stop. He just kept right on going right. and he turned it over. You know, last year, I thought the two best players in the SEC were Tayshaun Prince and certainly Nelson. 
We're going to take a look at the ball movement. Look at here. That's how you really get the extra shot. Look at the unselfishness. We saw that last night. To me, that's the key of Kansas. Making the extra pass, being unselfish, shot selection. Billy Donovan told me he watched the game last night. He said, wow. Yeah. He said, was I impressed with Kansas, the way they moved the ball? That's why they lead the nation in field goal percentage. Deshaun Prince, some blood on the side of his head, maybe behind his ear, and I think they've got it stopped. I was talking to Jerry Tipton, a writer that covers them, and he told me that Tayshon's been getting doubled up a lot, and therefore it's affected his scoring ability. I think when you're a great player, you have to learn to play with the double ups. The great ones will be able to handle that. And he's got to be able to respond to that. They need this kid. Tayshon's got to be just Tayshon. Five point Florida lead as Hayes is trying to get it inbounds. The pitch stolen by Lee. And then a foul by Fitch. Lee was just relentless in his full court pressure with those long arms. And when you hit the right core there, Brad, when you said long arms, those long arms create a nightmare for people. He plays the passing lane so well. At the line for Florida. This is fun. I mean, unbelievable. Last night we had that fog fanatics. Tonight, the rowdy reptiles. I mean, tomorrow you got Memphis and Louisville. I just want to get you got two guys. The Armani specials are going to be I on. Know. Talking Calipari <laughs> and Patino. I want their hand-me-downs. We'll please. have a fashion show, if nothing else. Yeah. Hey, tell them to do me a favor. Just give me their hand-me-downs. That's all I want. <laughs> Lee has missed three straight free throws. That's been a problem for him. Yes, it's been a problem for Florida in the loss to Arkansas. They probably would have won that game and they hit their free throw. I think they had 42 attempts. Nelson will run with White, and he lost the handle going up. And now Fitch is bumped by Colas. Colas says, who, me? No doubt about it. Carl Hess standing right there. No doubt about the contact. Foul is on number 42. I'll tell you this, conference, you got to lace them up. The scores are so tight, no matter who you play in the conference, every game's a war. Very few blowouts. Last weekend, of course, close games for those of you that maybe don't follow the SEC that closely. Kentucky lost to Alabama at home by three. Georgia lost to Vanderbilt in Nashville by two. And in overtime, it was 94-92 Arkansas, as Dick mentioned, over Florida. And so all the three top teams in the East all lost over the weekend, and you bet that makes them hungrier this week. That kid Pargo could flat out shoot it down at Arkansas. 35. Yeah, 35. SEC Player of the Week, as a matter of fact. Kamara. They work it around the perimeter with 14 on the shot clock. Kamara is going to take a baseline jumper. Can you tell me how he can go 42 minutes and not score a point? It's amazing. He's got pretty good touch. He's agile. He's very quick inside. Thrown away again by Florida. Getting a little sloppy. Now on the break, it's Hayes. And a blocking foul on Lee. They really like Hayes. They say he brings a certain toughness, a mentality that's so special. Got a lot of cats in the house tonight. They can put a team on the floor with Goose Givens and Pratt. Mike Pratt's here, the Skywalkers in the house. Eddie Walker's Skywalker. here. I can play point guard with that group and have a chance to win. <laughs> so at the line, Chuck Hayes, the freshman out of Modesto, California. And he really has played hard. He had six points and five rebounds in the loss to Alabama over the weekend. And I'm sure that hustle and that toughness that Dick's talking about has given him more playing time. That's what Tubby Smith is looking for right now. Somebody that wants it bad. You know, let's send a message out to Mr. Godfrey to relax. I read some of his quotes today. He said, hey, I can tell you right now, we can win all our games from here, and it's not a lot to get in the NCAA tournament. 17 and 3. Oh, if, they, if they don't get in the NCAA tournament, there should be an investigation. Nelson, another three. This one goes to. I'll tell you, Mr. Nelson, it looks like he got a message from Billy Donovan not starting the game, and he's responded. Nelson's 190th moves him. Past Teddy Dupay on the all-time three-point list. And just to think, they could have had Teddy Dupay. Tamara again. You can get this one to drop. Collis will clear it out. It's green on the run. Florida, with a one-point lead on Kentucky with 11 and a half to go in the half. Kids love playing his style of play. Up and down the floor, run, press, shoot the basketball. miner has been quiet so far. He's one of my favorite players, a hard worker. He can score and rebound and set picks like he just did for Nelson. Oh, Give nice it a go inside. What a great two-man game. A little screen, a little roll. You're right, Mr. Nestle. I love that youngster. Just like the kid we saw last night, Kirk Heinrich. They're not the same kind of player, but with point I'm making, they're third in terms of getting recognition and notoriety on their teams. But they are big-time players. Florida has seven assists already. They lead the conference in that category, as well as steals. And scoring. 
Here's Kamara. He hit one earlier and he got another one. I'll tell you, he's got three buckets already. It seems like somebody got a message to him. Think offense. That's you know, the lead to four. Talking about third wheels, I mean, simply here, you think about Haslam on the inside, Nelson on the perimeter, and then Butter. You talk about Kansas, they talk about Collison and Good. You talk about a hot three-point shooter. Here's our fire, Nelson. Here's Mr. Nelson. It's trifecta time. Biggest lead now, up to seven. Courtesy of those three-point shots, that's been the difference. And a whistle and a foul. Tubby it's going to be on Nelson. Tubby and I were talking about the three-point shot before the game. We talked about the game with Indiana and Illinois. Indiana makes 17 threes. That's 51 points. How do you offset that? We're talking about you got to recruit guys that can shoot. There's Mr. Nelson. Just one pass. I mean, nobody really comes at him aggressively. Somebody better get a message. Hey, this kid can shoot the three. 191 times he's shot and been successful on the three in his three seasons in Gainesville. But it looked like Bogans was going to get out of his little slump at the Notre Dame game when he scored 23. Spoke to Michael Bray today. He's happy he's getting Swannigan back in his lineup. They got to get a few wins right now. They got an outstanding freshman in Chris Thomas and some great recruits coming down here next year. Bogans got them both. First two for Keith with just over 10 minutes remaining in the first half. Good game. And a great start for Nelson, not only as a scorer, but as a passer as well with the inside feed to Bonner, and it's the Gators by five. Back in our Sports Center in game studio, St. John's and Seton Hall getting late. Marcus Hatton at 27 points in the game. 29 would have been better. They're going to overtime. Back to Brad and Dick. All right, a good one there, Steve. And a good one brewing here. 22 17, Florida by five. They've led throughout. 10-10 remaining in the first half. It is a magical night in Gainesville, if you know what I mean. There's two of the Magic oh, wow. Stop players, Tracy yes, McGrady and Mike Miller, former star here. The M&M gang, I'll tell you that. Look at Mr. Miller. I mean, he would be still eligible. Can you imagine that? Donnell Kwame. Harvey, him, oh, Kwame Teddy Brown. Dupay, Kwame Brown. Kwame Brown yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? And there's the T-Mac, Tracy McGrady. How good is that young guy? I saw him at the Adidas basketball camp as a high school senior, just dominating. That was his moment in the sun. And from then, his stock just keeps going up, up, and up. Hamilton going around a Bonner pick. Feed inside. And stolen away by Hawkins. He telegraphed that pass. You could see that pass happening. And turnover for turnover. Deshaun Prince trying to show some aggressiveness. Attacks the three-second area. Makes a good look. They don't handle the basketball. So out of California, here's Tayshawn's versatility. Talk about versatile guys. I love Tayshawn's versatility. Michael Dunleavy down there at Duke. Jason Capono at UCLA. But Tayshawn picks up his first foul. At 9.35 remaining in the half. Right next year, Dick Vitale and our ESPN crew at the O'Dome. O'Connell Center in Gainesville, Florida, which has become a hotbed for a hot ticket in college basketball, especially against Kentucky. Here's a walk on the baseline as Moore turns it over back-to-back -back trips down court. I'll tell you the one thing Kentucky's done really solid here defensively. They have kept the ball away from Udonis Haslam. He hasn't been able to be effective inside, and he's been on fire recently for Florida. Pressure defense. You have to really handle the ball well, spread the court, and make the open shot against Florida. Hawkins can't get it to go. Way up for a rebound with Bogans, but he couldn't keep his hands on it. And Hamilton brings it down. There is Halton in there with Bonner, Haslam, and Nelson. Hamilton midair and had to make an adjustment, and they almost turned it over for the third trip straight. Well, poor job in terms of spacing. They don't have really good spacing, 15, 17 foot apart. Haslam, nice pass underneath to Bonner. I'll tell you, Bonner just knows how to play. Just like Heinrich knows how to play on the perimeter for Kansas, this kid knows how to play on the inside. Great basketball feel, great basketball instinct. Kentucky, Dick, we talked about dry spells. They've gone over two minutes now without a field goal. That's their problem, Brad, all year long. Scoring. They just don't get enough offensive firepower. Possession arrow. The hell ball is going to stay with Kentucky. 
In the last five games, you look at Prince, he's three for 11, seven for 12, three for 12. We're gonna look at the high-low entry, good release by Bonner, knows how to convert inside. He was two for eight when we had him against Auburn, and he was five for 15 when you had him against Alabama. Number 11, Kentucky, number six, Florida. Those rankings would have been even higher had they both not lost over the weekend, but it makes this game probably even more vital because Kentucky doesn't want to fall under 500 in the conference, and Florida wants to stay with Georgia, the top team in the East in the SEC. Kentucky has lost more than four SEC games. You ready for this, Brad? Only once in the last 12 years. As I said before, to get to the Final Four since 59, it's never happened. The eight teams that have made the Final Four have never had more than four losses. You take a look right here. They were 12-4 last year, 12-4 the year. After that, 11-5 was the year they lost more than four in the last 12 years. And it's just... I mean, they lose tonight. They got four already tucked away. And tools them at home when you took Georgia and Alabama. Bogans gave up the three. You can tell he's worried about his shot. But it hasn't been dropping, or he would have let that one go. He's got to attack the basket. It's pretty tough. There he is attacking. And he goes against a triple team, though, and Haslam stuffs it on it. Pitch underneath. He gets more rebounds and can do more underneath than most guards in the conference, but he can't score it. And now it's Haslam the other way. And a whistle and a foul. Oh, going to be a traveling violation on Haslam. So that's another turnover for Kentucky. With seven minutes and 54 seconds remaining in the first half. Gators with a seven-point lead over Kentucky. Cell phones. F Mardi Gras kind of feel here at the Old Dome. 24-17, some of the rowdy reptiles here on Rivalry Week that will continue Thursday. In the Big Ten, Purdue will take out number 25, Indiana, at 7 o'clock on ESPN. On ESPN 2 at 7, two of the top-ranked teams in the ACC, Maryland and Virginia, will get together. Then at 9, back on ESPN, Nick will see this one, number one, Duke, hosting North Carolina in one of the best rivalries in all of college basketball. It's all part of rivalry week on ESPN, and there's the ACC standing going into the aforementioned game. Well, you know, Virginia got a tough date now. They got Maryland down there. They lose that game. They finished the first eight games, four and four. And you're talking about a team in the top ten in America. They got to protect their turf down there in Charlottesville against a really good Maryland team. And they got Missouri this weekend, right? Yes, sir. Bogans trying to pull up jumper over Haslam, and Haslam's been in space the entire game, but Prince on the cleanup. Deshaun Prince hanging around at the right place. He's got that great size, those long arms. Haslam down low, had it stripped by Bogans. Bonner trying to leave it on the baseline. To he's got Prince. Alton, and now it's Bogans on the drive. See, that's where he's at his best, attacking the basket. He did that so well his freshman year. And a traveling violation on Florida. And that's what Keith Bogans has to do a lot more. Kentucky fans would love to see him get aggressive and attack the basket. There's Tayshon giving it up to his buddy. He could have given it back, but he didn't have to. He finished the play. From out of the math, the high school, Morgan Wooten, Fame played with Joseph Forte. Okay, North Carolina used Mr. Forte. Three-point game right now. That was the ninth Florida turnover. And when they come out on the turnover ratio ahead of their opponents, they're 12-1 this year. But right now... They've got five more than Kentucky has. As Bonner matched up now, played against Tayshawn. A little switch defensively. Hamilton now on Tayshawn Prince. Hamilton, a tough defensive stopper. Hawkins, the kick out to Prince for the tie. And airballed it off the backside. Well, that's good defense by Hamilton. He really came out and challenged Prince. Nelson trying to drive on Bogans. Leaves it for Bonner. And he had it stripped by Prince. Nice job by Prince defensively. Double figure turnovers now for the Gators. Give and go. Nice pass by Kamara. Well, the simplest play in basketball. I give it to the wing. I cut without the ball. Something good happens for all you young kids out there. Learn to move without that basketball. Six straight points now for Kentucky. And they've cut the lead down to one. They know their program has really arrived here at Florida. Everybody's upset they lost two games in a row. And still, ties for the best start that they've ever had at 15 and 3. Amazing. They had a 14 game win streak. Billy Donovan said, I know we've arrived. Jeremy Foley told me the same thing. He said, People are all upset. They want to know what's happening. <laughs> Hawkins through traffic. Leaves Fitz by himself, but he missed the three. Hogan's and Bonner go at it to try to get up the loose ball. And it'll be Kentucky basketball. 
Gonna watch the simplest play in the game. Free, freeze it right there. Freeze it. See now as the defense shows, there's gonna be an opening right down the lane. He's gonna find the open guy. A little simple give, and you go. What a breakdown by Nelson. He never saw a ball. You man, you got to see both. Talk to a writer today. Call me Chip Alexander down in Raleigh. He's doing a whole series on the backdoor cut and movement without the ball. Daniels baseline jumper won't go. Fitch keeps it alive. Hawkins inside of Prince. Lee blocks the shot. And Haas Haslam clears it off. They're going to love Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee is going to be a star here in Gainesville. And a career high 11 rebounds in the loss to Arkansas. He's got two block shots here in the early going already. I'll tell you who's really underrated. Justin Hamilton is a sort of presence he possesses. Here he is with a push pass down to White. Anticipate so well from out of Sarasota, Florida. I got to take care of my guys from Sarasota. <laughs> Here's a look at David Lee with a block shot on Prince, and that is perfect. Look at Lee up there at a diaper dandy. He says, I know you're a Rolls Royce superstar. Whoa, Nelson. That was 30 yeah. feet away. That was an area coach hey, from downtown. <laughs> he shot that from Ocala from George Steinbrenner's horse for <laughs> Five minutes in the half, Florida by three. Hawkins finds Hayes alone. Kentucky again struggling with their outside shooting. That has been a dilemma all year long. That drives coaches bananas. That's why Kansas has such a great shot to win a national title. They got guys on a perimeter that can make shots. Look at this shot. Are you serious? What, what range is he trying to show the NBA people there? That was Brick City, USA. Well, he had been nearly perfect from three-point range, but that was a whole different range. Miller's still laughing about He's that. He's still laughing. Thing. He said, that's my range. He's not supposed to be shooting out there. <laughs> Lee tried to lob it in, and the pass was too lazy, and Hayes knocked it away. Three on one, Kentucky. And they still can't connect. Hayes doing a good job inside, deflecting a lot of passes going into Haslam. Nelson through traffic, now waiting for some help. Finds it behind him. Hamilton. I like Justin Hamilton. He had a big game against Tennessee when he scored 22. He had a big game against Temple to start the season with 17. And he guards people. He's a defensive player. He missed two big free throws, though, with 10 seconds left in the game against Arkansas. He played his butt off, though, for a guy that had missed two games with a separated shoulder. I'll say that for him. He, he had knee surgery last year. After the Georgia game, missed the remainder of the year. Here's the ball I got to play on. No, I don't. Nelson will take it from us. And he had it blocked by Hayes. I tell you, Hayes is a warrior. He's a tenacious competitor. The Kentucky fans who have a passion for the game are going to love Mr. Hayes' effort. Brett Nelson from right in front of us. Looked like he had a deuce, but nice hustle by Hayes. Keeps it at 29-23. when mom got this great new job. I heard her talking to dad about doing the right thing with her retirement money. Something about rollover, which gave me this great idea. Come on, baby. Come on. Roll over. Roll over. You're just going to turn your body this way. I hope her rollover was easier. It must be. No load mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Steve Levy back in our Sports Center in game studios. Boston College down at Miami, down two late. Troy Bell from three got it. They hit their free throws down the stretch, and the Eagles a winner. We're still waiting to decide a winner in St. John's Seton Hall. They're playing a little overtime right now over on ESPN2. Back to Brad and Jim. All right, Steve, thank you. Florida by six in this one in the SEC. And, Dick, I was just bragging up Perry Clark's Miami team about ten minutes ago with a film crew out here, and they turn around and lose one at home. But it just shows you that in college basketball right now, it's anybody and anybody that can beat you. Oh, it's so wacky. I tell you, I think a team that stands out along with Duke that I've seen is certainly Kansas. Kansas, right. Kansas to me, is just so impressive. I mean, we caught them on a day where they looked awesome last night. They graded out in every area an A+. Plus. And there's so many teams that have a shot. Cincinnati's got to be awesome. Right. See, defensively, I'll tell you this, there aren't many people that guard people like Cincinnati. Cincinnati putting a hurting on the last time we saw a score against East Carolina tonight as well. In Conference USA, that's where I'll be tomorrow. Night. Louisville and Memphis. And Dick's going to the ACC for a couple of days. This next three weeks start separating 
the cream from the rest of the barrel, I guess. Haslam inside, missed in close. I'm not sure there's a whole bunch of cream. I think, as you said, it's Duke and Kansas and Maryland and I don't know who else, but everybody else can get beat, I think. I think there's about eight teams that can win six games in a row and win an NCAA championship. A lot of teams can go to win the Sweet 16, but to get and win six in a row, I only think there are about eight clubs that can do that. Hayes tried the left hand over Haslam. That didn't work. Handled in the outlet to Nelson. Got his man to run by. Missed the jumper. Got Bogans in the air. Kept alive, though, by Green. Try to go inside to Haslam. Loose ball again. And it's Bogans. Nice leave on the baseline to Daniel. That's a great pass right there. Very unselfish, Daniels. Keith Bogans. Daniel's got a little ankle injury, it looks like there. He's limping. Looking Daniels, at the bench. Daniels played very hard in the Alabama game. In fact, he's been one of their top rebounders the past couple of games. See, that's what Daniels and Hayes bring to the lineup. They don't bring a lot of scoring, but yep. they bring toughness and energy. Very active, and that's how you win. Hamilton out to Green, and now they reset. Ten on the shot clock. Nelson trying to go inside. But they're having a tough time inside getting the ball. Hayes doing a great job defensively on Haslam. Orin Green tried to leave it for Lee on the baseline. Swatted out of there. It's another floor to turnover. Gators right now are sloppy handling the ball. They're going to have to find a way to get the ball inside to Yadonis Haslam. He's too important in a raw offensive set because if he scores inside, he spreads the court. Keith Bogans, who didn't start tonight, has four points, but more importantly, he's been aggressive and watched this pass down to the baseline to Daniel. Yeah, what he's doing really is attacking the basket. Pulled up under control, got the ball to the open man. A little over two minutes left in the first half, and Florida leads Kentucky by four, 29-25, and a key matchup in the SEC East. Coming in, Kentucky three and three in that side of the Southeastern Conference. And Florida four and two in the division. Georgia will be playing tomorrow night. They're on top in the East at five and two. Tubby Smith's coached eight straight NCAA tournaments. Lute Olson has the most 17 in a row. John Chaney 12, Roy Williams 12, Bob Huggins 10, Tubby eight, along with Gary Williams and Kelvin Sampson. Think of that Kentucky program. National championships in 48, 49, 51, 58, 78, 96, and 98. They fly those banners so proudly down a rup. Seven of them. One of, the, one of the stars of that 78 team, Jack Gibbons, is, is here. Talked to the Goose before the game. He was sitting behind us. He had 41, didn't he, in the yep. championship yep. game against Duke? Unbelievable show he put on. Goose was golden. <laughs> Goose was golden. Still looks like he could play a little bit. 29-27. Oh, yes, Florida here. We're under two minutes. Fast-paced first half. Not a lot of free throws. Not a lot of stops in the action. White not playing well so far in this first half. Air ball, a three. I'll tell you, perimeter shooting really lacking. We've got to find guys that can make shots from the perimeter. They're recruiting today. Chase guys that can shoot the rock. Oh. Prince trying to drive. Bonner clears off that miss. Kentucky had another opportunity to tie it up and couldn't. Bonner certainly can shoot. He had 31 against South Florida, 28 against Vanderbilt, 18 and 10 against Tennessee. We saw that South Florida game. That was his career high. That's what South Florida was 9 0. Played him tough for a half. Psychologically, I think that game took a lot out of South Florida. Here's Bonner, the guy we were just talking about, missing a three. Haslam trying to find a handle underneath. Everybody goes to the deck. Possession arrow. It'll be Florida's ball. Florida basketball. Just under a minute left in the first half. And coming up at halftime, Sports Center in game. It's the Mass Mutual Financial Group halftime report. Steve will be along as. I want to tip my cap to the Nevada Gaming Commission out there as Mike Tyson's appeal to box and get a license out there was denied. Oh, good, Marty good. Schottenheimer's the new coach of the San Diego Chargers. The Buckeyes roll big in the first game of our twin bill tonight on Super Tuesday. Steve will have all that info for you coming up in about a minute. Well, I'm happy to hear that on a Gold of Greenberg show on Monday. I stock down, Mr. Tyson. I didn't know that. You told me I had good news now. That guy shouldn't be allowed to fight. Are you kidding me? Come on, Steve Levy. If I only had Steve's looks and had his hair, man, <laughs> I'd be a TV star. I thought you were going to say if you had Tyson's looks. I'm oh, no, 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 no. Those. <laughs> oh, God. Unbelievable. <laughs> Two-point game, Kentucky looking to tie again. Barr gave some good offense when he came in the game, something they have not gotten out of him. As that matchup, Bonner and Prince. 15 on the shot clock, 33. In the half. Hawkins double team by Hamilton and Haslam. Now they're going to have to think about a shot. Kamara 
Over to Fitch, driving against Nelson. Trying to leave it for Kamara, stolen by Hamilton. The outlet to White on the run. Uh-oh, uh-oh. He's a high riser, Mr. Levy. He's a slam dipsy dude, Dr. Ruga. Slam champ, James Jam and White. Kamara, got to get it to somebody. Hawkins, three on the clock. Here's Prince for three. Got it oh, at the buzzer. One. Big that's shot for Tayshawn Prince. Prince. That's a big one, and he likes it, baby. He likes it. That's a momentum builder as you go to the locker room. Tell you what, that was an exciting 30 seconds as it was up and down the court. White on the reverse flush, and then Tayshawn Prince worked very hard to not only get that ball down and get it in some of his teammates' hands, but more importantly, maybe, to get open down on that baseline. Yeah, he's really played a solid first half. Came out, was aggressive. There he is, spotting up, shooting the three. The three has not been there for him recently. I'll tell you, look at that enthusiasm. Look at that energy. Gators leading by one. 31-30, our halftime score. The Mass Mutual Financial Group halftime report and Sports Center in game. Here's Steve Lee. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by 1010-220. Dial it in all calls up to 20 minutes or only 99 cents. Kentucky finished that first half with a 7-2 run in the final four minutes. That helped their cause. They're down by one on the road in front of this group. And get by Tal Brad Nessler along with you from the O-Dome. First half, Florida, had they not hit their three-point shots, they'd be in a hole right now. Neither team's playing that well. They really would be in a hole, but you know what's keeping Kentucky right there, knocking on the door? Tenacious defense. And that's been a staple all year. They haven't been doing it with offensive productivity. They do it with defense, and it keeps them in the game. The tempo in the game right now favors Kentucky. It does. It favors Kentucky to tempo. Florida would rather score about 95 a game, but it's not going to happen the way this one's gone. But Tayshawn Prince got himself open as you saw the light go off. He hit it at the buzzer. There was his reaction. He led the way for Kentucky with 10 points, including two three-pointers. That one came just as the buzzer was sounding to end the first half. But the three-point shooting of Brett Nelson is the reason that Florida has the lead. He's four for six from three-point range. And as an example again of Kentucky's defense with the eight steals, they forced 12 turnovers, led to 12 points, and the defensive job, you're not going to find his name in a box score with a lot of points, but Hayes did a fantastic job denying the ball inside to Udonis Haslam, the best post player in the SEC. Morgan's to open the second half, puts Kentucky in front for the first time since it was 4-2. to two. And what a relief. You could just see the unbelievable joy in Bogan's face when he made that shot. 33-31. Got to have Esto playing against Haslund. Bonner doubled down low. Nelson thought he had a look, goes right back into Bonner. They play catch until Nelson can get loose for the three, and he missed it. But the follow is good by Orion Green. Orion Green's got great hops. He's a kid that can play out of the perimeter. He can play the wing. Very active athlete. Oh, and down hard is Marquis Esto. Man, he hit the deck right in front of us, and the whole building moved. I tell you, that would be a tough loss for Kentucky because they've already lost Stone, who transferred. They lost Jason Parker at the beginning of the season. Their inside game being depleted. He looks like he'll be okay. Now, what a great kid he is, too. Lost his dad on January 5th. Gave up a scholarship to pay his way, really, to make... The scholarship limit for uh, Kentucky yeah, down made, to 13. So. Made one available for uh, Mustone. Ooh, that was friendly fire. He just got run over by Hawkins and went down in an odd fashion, but he's up. And I'll give the Florida fans credit. They will rip your ears off. There's Donna right there. And Ashley Judd. Oh, there's Ashley Judd. I got a kiss from her today. What a day I had. I met my little granddaughter. You saw her at the hotel, Sydney Nicole. At least I got a kiss from Sydney Nicole. Yeah, and I got one from Ashley Judd, and I really did. Nobody believes me. I'm telling you, Donna, I got one. Time to kill. Double jeopardy. I told you those. Yeah, you at least did. watch your movies, and you're the one that gets the kiss. Yeah, he did. He told me all about those movies. Loose ball. Bonner picks it up from Prince. Take Kentucky turnover of the ball game. She gave me a kiss because she knows I'm so ugly, I'm harmless. <laughs> Here's Bonner, wide open. Short on the three. He's not been his normal self tonight offensively. I'll tell you, the defense of Kentucky is sort of flighted this crowd. This crowd is not as alive as we've seen when they go on one of their patented runs. Bogan's another three. Short this time. 
And kept alive by Cliff Hawkins. There's Bogans. He's got another open look. He missed two in a row. Well, see, he's going to play now exclusively on the perimeter. And again, that's not his game. That's his game. Attack the basket. They move it around. They'll get a third try. Hawkins lays it in. Hawkins shows him moment. You see greatness like we saw in that game against Duke. You see his penetration and his quickness. But he's going to have to work all year long on making that perimeter shot so people have to respect his game. That's his first basket of the ball game. Hawkins, and it puts Kentucky again up by a deuce. Haslam, they got to get him some touches. They will not win this game tonight, Florida, unless Haslam starts getting involved offensively. He hooks it out to Bonner. Bonner can't connect inside, and Kentucky comes back. Walked with it. And now a blocking foul. Gonna be on Green. That's smart basketball. A good basketball IQ there by Bogans. He's starting to think about attacking the basket. And that's what his strength is. Cliff Hawkins is the guy that's put Kentucky in front by two with this move. Yeah, he gets into the three-second area, pulls up under control, gets the conversion. We saw a bunch of kids last night that understand their roles. You see Miles out there for Kansas. Knows he's got to distribute the ball. Collison down inside. Good at inside, outside. Moshe and Heinrich shoot oh, the threes. Love them. Everybody did their job last night. I really Kansas. love that team. There's good ball movement by Kentucky, but it's all around the perimeter. A zoning right now, Florida. Logan's looking for a pick from Kamara. Got it. He'll try another three, and he still can't find it. That's not his game, Brad. That's not his game. That's his game. He didn't get that one either. Hawkins again on the cleanup duty. He's got to attack the basket with that body, Bogans. Bogans has missed about five shots in the last two trips down court, but it's been Hawkins Timeout. that's found a little Timeout. seam inside Timeout. to give Kentucky its biggest advantage of the ball game. 37-33, three minutes into half number two. By this many, up four with 17 to play. Ashley Judd, one of the big-time Kentucky fans in the entire world, tries to get as many games as possible with Mr. Vitale before the game. Hey, let's get a run. Well, I want to give her a kiss. Eat your heart out, guys. Eat your heart out. Careful, Dick. Careful. <laughs> He's a married woman now. Look at that rock she had. Wow. He's a married woman now. A Dario race car driver's Chetty. wife. Yeah, Dario Franchetti. Steve Levy's eating his heart out in the studio. I know he is. I know he is eating his heart out there. Steve's probably eating popcorn. He's got time for that right now. We hey. have action going with 16.53 to play. On the inside, Kamara trying to block Haslam and picks up the foul. They do a great job, Kentucky, surrounding Haslam. They really are attacking him whenever he touches the ball down in the low post. They do a great job surrounding him. Look at this right here. Freeze it right there. Look at this here. Are you kidding? Now he's going to wheel to this side, though. What a great drop step on Kamara. There he is, wheeling to the inside. He has got to step his game up and become aggressive offensively for them to win. Udonis leads the SEC in double-doubles with nine of them. And he's in the top ten and... A lot of categories. Sixth in block shots, eighth in scoring, first in rebounding, second in field goal percentage. And he hits his first two free throws of the night, gives him four, and the Gators back to it in two. Prince going up was foul. You know, you mentioned Haslam in all those categories. He had 20 and 16 against LSU, 18 and 15 against Georgia, three straight double double games, 19 13 in the loss to Arkansas. He is so key to this team because when he draws attention and he's effective inside, all the wing people become so much better. His 23 double doubles are in his career. Which continues to move him up the all-time list as well. What a job this guy has done. You talk about a guy that can shoot the rock. 1987 for Providence on the Flyers. And Rick Pitino took him to the Final Four. He's got the second of two. And Kentucky back in front by three. Here's Haslam. Kamara doing a nice job on him. Kamara gives away a lot of weight in that battle. But he is taller than Udonis. And he's very quick. And he gets a lot of help from up on top when Prince attacks him. Foul is going to be on Cliff Hawkins. That's his second. Kentucky leading on the road in rivalry week here at O'Connell Center in Gainesville, Florida, where Florida has won the last three from Kentucky on their home floor and trying to hold home serve to go to five and two, which would 
for the time being tie them with Georgia atop the east of the SEC and Kentucky trying to avoid going under 500 in conference play white spins inside leaves it in low and a foul on Kamara I tell you, Haslam went up. you can't teach that kind of quickness explosiveness on that baseline what a first step by James White he just attacked the basket drew the people to look at that spin look at that really whirl the 180 the dump down he hesitated a little bit right there Haslam so Udonis goes back to the line third team All-American last year starting to go to him a little bit more starting to get the ball inside that last time out they had Billy Donovan was told stressed the point to get it to number 50 as Dick's been saying since the second half started and with that at least he's gotten to the free throw line by packing it down low against Kamara and company and he's shooting free throws well so far four for four I tell you Billy Donovan's brought so much excitement here in basketball went to the final game in 2000 lost the time is at Michigan State they were great against Michigan State here when you and I were here yep. Earlier this year, we've been so many places. I don't know where we are anymore. <laughs> I don't either. I don't know where we are. We don't want to tell the story about what triple has done. I don't think so. They're, Prince loads it up from three point land. Sure. If they want to read it, just go to my website. I wrote about it. It was unbelievable. That's all I can say. But don't feel sorry for us. We're very lucky. <laughs> it was a different story. One for the ages, that's for sure. <laughs> Four point. Kentucky lead again with that three pointer. Here's a lob underneath to Haslam. Lee got it to him. They move it around, and Hamilton has a three to look at. Came up short, but White keeps it alive. White very active. He's got great legs, a great bounce. Nelson needed some help, got rid of it. Oh, that's a dangerous pass. Fitch knocks it out of bounds. Well, you know, he threw the ball over the top of defenses. Could be effective, but not when you telegraph it. 15-21 remaining in the ball game. And Kentucky continues to hold on to the lead, courtesy of Deshaun Prince, last year's SEC Player of the Year, knocking down the triple. And the Stars are out tonight, and Kentucky leads by four. It's Ashley and Donna, they like it, Donna Smith. Kentucky trying to pull an upset on the road here in Gainesville. The rivalry week continues, and it will do so throughout the week. Thursday, reminder, 7 o'clock on ESPN, Purdue and Indiana get together. On ESPN 2 at 7, Maryland and Virginia will tangle number three against number five, and then Duke and Carolina back on ESPN 9 o'clock. It's all Thursday night, part of Rivalry Week on ESPN. You know, everybody's talking blowout city. All I can remember in 95 when North Carolina was number two in America with Stackhouse and Wallace, and Duke was one in seven. It went to double overtime before North Carolina could leave with the W. I'm not saying right now on paper, obviously, it looks like a blowout, but you know, Brad, when you've been around the game, that's why we have upset city and shock city when guys do things sometimes they're just unbelievable. What if Lang gets Boozer in foul trouble? What if a guy like Morrison knocks down five threes? What if Cable gets on fire? Who knows? You gotta play the game. Chuck Hayes picks up the foul, bumping Haslam on the inside. That's gonna be his first. And Florida will get a fresh clock and inbound on the baseline with 15, 13 to go, and they trail Kentucky. Kentucky's done a great job controlling the transition game of Florida and also handling their pressure not really turning it over where Florida's getting layups off the uh, steal they make it a half court game Kentucky's got a great shot to win the game white outside in and out on the three and Hawkins will clear it off tempo so important control tempo Bogan's trying to work against the freshman leaves it inside for Prince and there's Bogan's attacking inside the one two tandem the tandem that was supposed to be so special delivers all the way down nice drive by Justin Hamilton his first field goal of this half I think Ham is too unselfish I think he's one of those kids that doesn't think enough about offense he has offensive ability Prince got up in the air and had to leave it on the baseline and did so nicely to Hayes and he's fouled by Lee Four fouls on number 24, David Lee, his second. See, take a look right now. This is Keith Bogan's game, Brad. That's what I'm talking about. Attack the basket, draw people. He drives, draws, dishes it to his buddy, and Prince converts. That one-two punch has to be prolific for them to have a chance this year to cut the nets down in Atlanta. 
Billy Donovan right now is ready to send in five new Gators. He's pulling up Mike Krzyzewski. He did the same thing against Kentucky. He said, you know what? I'm going to do that. Maybe it'll work for me. It worked for Mike Krzyzewski, but he had a guy at the end of the game. He said, Jason, Jason take over the game. Take over, Jason. He actually sent four guys in, not five, so Bonner stays in there, but the group that joins him is Green, Nelson, Halton, and Colas. It's nice to have a guy like Jason, like Phil Jackson had. I got by the name of Michael the Magnificent. When the game was late, he just simply went in the to go and need the last shot. He said, hey, you guys, you see what he makes? Give him the ball, get out of his way, and let him do his thing. The lead is six now for Kentucky. And let's see if Florida's new group can come up with some offense. They are, by the way, 0 for 4 this half from outside the arc after living by the three quarter of the first half. Really challenging Bonner now, giving Bonner good looks from the perimeter. Green, all the way, squatted out of there by Prince. There's his versatility again. See those long arms of Tayshaun Prince. Tarut leaves the Hawkins now inside of Hayes and Kentucky on a roll right now. Nice Hayes. play by Hayes, moving without the basketball. Will Donovan might want to think about a timeout. It's an eight-point lead. Right now he's working the officials, and he'll let them play. Well, really, the only guy that's got scoring ability that's on the floor is Bonner. He's hooked somebody down on the baseline, and he's called for the foul. Last time Kentucky lost, I mean, Florida lost three games in a row was back in 97-98. There's the block shot by Tayshaun Prince with that wingspan. He's like a 747, man. Nelson on a runner off the glass is too strong, trying to fight for his own rebound, and he fouls Hayes. They have no rhythm right now at all offensively. Right now, Kentucky in command, doing a phenomenal job defensively. Udonis Haslam set to check back in. And let's see who's going to go out. Colas will go back out. So the lead remains eight, and Kentucky can add to it. Florida's going to try some full court heat right now. But it's been all Wildcats here in the last three or four minutes. Estill checks back in for the Cats. It's been very rare to lose two games in a row for Florida last year. They did it one time, losing to Georgia and Vanderbilt. This year, Georgia and Arkansas. Well, they almost came up with a turnover. Uh, Hawkins will get it across the timeline. Caruth can shoot it. He's not shy. He missed a three. Haslam will clear off the glass. Out to Green on the run. Now Nelson. Green's wide open. A triple. Go. That's big. That gets the crowd back in it. Now we get you up into your press. And this is where they get aggressive. They're going to get the Rowdy Riptiles into the game. The roof, three on two, Kentucky. Daniels trying to scoop it on the baseline. Ran out of real estate. Hit the bottom of the backboard. It's out of bounds to Florida. Tubby Smith very upset with that possession. There's a look by Nelson. Good recognition. You read, you recognize, you react, and then you knock it down for a big triple. Look at Tubby. Look at the competitiveness. Look at his fierce competitor. 13 to play. His team is up five. But Florida's got the ball. And looking to add Haslam, to what Haslam. they did the last trip down. Haslam to go to the big double team. Oh, yes, he's out. Look at him jump with John. Oh, I think Haslam has arrived. Haslam has arrived. The Dominator. Ball almost stolen in the backcourt. Now it's Hawkins. And it's blocked by Haslam. Comes loose to Carew. The tempo's starting now to go to way of Florida. I talk about tempo. I'm not talking about a dance. I'm talking about speed, quickness, about a game. Yes, sir, look at those rally reptiles. Haslam giving him some juice right now. He's giving him some energy. There's the ball inside. You got to go to the big fella. You go to your big horse on the interior. There's the score. And now look. Look at the reaction. He wants to do a little dance. Showing his agility. Look at the dancer. Look at him do his thing. Udonis with eight points. Six of them this half. Has cut the Wildcat lead to three. Maybe taking him out was really a, a little bit sign to motivate him. Wednesday night hockey presented by Nextel on ESPN at 8 o'clock Eastern tomorrow night. The Washington Capitals continue in their push for a playoff berth in the Eastern Conference. They'll take out the St. Louis Blues. For more info, log on to ESPN.com. I got a feeling we're going to see a lot of opportunities inside for Haslam the rest of this game as Tayshaun goes to that sideline. Mr. Kamara on there as well. Let's see if Kentucky can quiet 
the crowd as Florida has worked its way back in it after being down by eight. Well, he's, but Bogan's got to step up and be the leader out there with Prince on that sideline. He's the veteran. Hawkins. Rebound. Haslam had it and lost it to Esther. Now Caruth will try a three that's blocked from behind by Hawkins. Ball out, Florida. They will allow Hawkins to shoot the ball from deep. They will give him that opportunity and that chance. He's going to have to earn the respect to make those for them to really, really challenge him. And it wasn't cognizant of. It was Halton being at his backside, and he came over the top to knock it away. Yeah, Caruth didn't see him coming. He had no vision of him coming from the rear. Haslam again. Dump it inside. Go to the big fella. And it's got it to one. Bonner keeps it alive. He does cut it to one. You don't have to be a great jumper. You just got to be active. Oh, the Gators have arrived. The Gators have arrived. Billy Donovan's Gators. They feel it now, baby. The Cats got to lace them up. And Tommy knows his kids have to lace them up for the last 11.55. SEC basketball. Foul is on Daniels as Bonner got it on the baseline and went right back up with it. And you see number 14 swat at it. Chance for a three-point play by Byron. He's one of the best free throw shooters in the conference. And we are tied for only the third time tonight. We were tied at two. We were tied at 33. We're now tied at 47 with 11.55 to go. National G. Sports Center in game studios. You know, it's rival week every week, everywhere. South Florida over Central Florida. But most significance, DeMarco Johnson of Charlotte is out. Altron Jackson is in. Conference USA's all-time leading scorer. And he better look out for his current teammate, B.B. Walden. Back to Brad and Dick, guys. All right, Steve, here we're tied up. Rivalry week in the SEC. Number six, Florida's battled their way back in to a tie. They were down 47-39. They've scored eight straight points to tie it at 47. Well, if you're a fan and you love basketball and you want competitiveness, that's where you need a little run from our standpoint to get a little excitement going in this place. And right now we got it. We got it where you want, man, from a fan standpoint. 11.55, and it's all tied and two quality teams going head to head. Brings out the best. Hawkins trying to feed Hayes. Astro got a timeout call as he was flying out of bounds. Well, he's right there, had a chance, had an opportunity. Look at the shirt of Tubby Smith. Does he have a passion? Does he love what he's doing? I'll tell you one thing. You take a look right here. Wow, is this guy? Look at that. Look at that. He needs a new shirt. He needs a. What if he can afford one? If he can afford one to paint him down to Kentucky. What a great place, though, for yes. basketball down there at Rupp Arena. And all those fans really love their cats. And in here, as I said earlier, it's hot and muggy, and it's Billy and Tubby. Billy and Tubby, they both run that same staff with Rick Pitino. Coming up when we're finished, Carl Ravage and Rich Eisen with Sports Center, Super Bowl Media Day. Everybody talking the talk on the Tuesday before the big game. Mike Tyson's going to have to find somewhere else to fight, somebody else to bite. NBA All Star snubs and more with Carl and Rich in about 12 minutes. Bogans off the inbound. Got the three. You know, he shoots the three really well, but he squares his body. He doesn't rush the shot. He gets the good look at the goal. So immediately after being tied up, they go right back in front by three, courtesy of the long ball by Bogans. Hamilton. Alton leaves it for Bonner. He thought about trying to tie it, and now on the baseline, they do try it, and Green can't get it. Well, Bonner did a great job with that little fake and reversal of the basketball to get the open shot. A nice screen by Hayes. Trying to throw it over to Tayshawn Prince, and they throw it out of bounds. Had the right idea. He was trying to get that pass to the weak side. Number 10, Brent Nelson. This guy working his heart out. Look at Bogans inside, setting a screen. Laying that big screen down inside. And nice. comes off. Great execution. That's how they lead right now by Bogans 3. 50-47. We approach the halfway mark of the second half. 
inside pass. Nice feed by Bonner, and Haskins fouled by Esther. You know, Bonner's really an excellent passer. A lot yeah, of people is. don't give the kid enough credit for the way he passes the rock. He's got good ability to shoot the perimeter shot, but he also can pass the basketball. He has that good bounce pass, good feed. That's a third foul on Estel. And so Udonis Haslam, who's been perfect at the free throw line, will step up to try to close this gap down to a single point. 10.42 remaining in the ball game. Brad Nestle with Vitale and our ESPN crew in Gainesville. A key battle in the SEC, especially in the Eastern Division of the SEC. Because right now Georgia is a game up on Florida, and Kentucky doesn't want to fall a game under the 500 mark in their side of the standings. And so this game on rivalry week is vital for both clubs. And Haslam got them both. Six straight this half for Udonis from the strike. Well, they're starting to get him some touches inside, and good things happen when the big fella touches the rock. He's green up on top, chasing defensively. He's like a scramble guy. Nice lead by Bogans in the paint. They come all the way back around the perimeter. Hawkins inside to Hayes. Bonner got a piece of it. Hayes will try a second time. Now the follow by Kamara. I'll tell you, Kamara's Kamara. been very active offensively tonight for a guy for 42 minutes who didn't score. That's his eighth point already. Hamilton. Hassel, they had him right there. They missed him. Waited too long, and now he's fouled from behind by Kamara. Yeah, you got to find the right time when a guy's open. He's got that big body inside. You got to bring the rock to him. Kamara's got three fouls, and so does Estel now. There's Kamara trying to beat him with quickness, trying to step over the top. See, that's really hurts. Now they lose Marvin Stone, who transfers to Louisville. Hey, I think I would be shocked if Brandon Bender, who left Louisville, he ends up at Kentucky. So you can have a trade, a trade in basketball. Stone for Bender. Bender's got three years eligibility left. There's so much love between the two schools, too. That's a first free throw. Haslam's missed, but Florida keeps it alive with a rebound. And Kamara might have picked up another foul, and that's four. That's not that's four. He's going to bring Estel back in the game. And Estel's got three. So Tubby's going, uh-oh, running out of big guys. Well, he lost Jason Parker. We talked about that to an ACL injury before the season, and he would have been their presence in that low post. Parker will have three years left when he comes back from that right knee operation that was injured on Midnight Madness even before the season began, before the practice began. Kamara goes out. Haslam goes back to the stripe. Talking to Brooks Downing before the game, as you look at Dave Hobbs, used to be the head coach at Alabama, and assistant to Tubby. They worked together. All those guys, Sutton and Hobbs and Tubby, they were assistants to J.D. Barnett at VCU, Virginia Commonwealth. That is to Tubby's left, Mike Sutton to his right, certainly right to our right, rather, Dave Hobbs and Richie Hanson on that staff as well. Haslam, boys, he got the stroke working. He is eight of nine from the free throw line, and the lead is down to one. Yeah, they're really taking advantage of his great talent inside by making him touch the basketball. And that's Coach, and that's Billy Donovan. He insisted to his people in the timeouts, bring the ball inside. Haslam had only two points in the first half, ten in this half, though. I'll tell you, from an announcer's point, you know, you and I, we want to see you right the buzzer beater. I mean, we don't like blowouts like last night because you got to talk about everything other than the game. This is great because I think this is going to be a mailbox masher. Go right to the last possession. Now we're in the... Final 10 minutes now. Prince picked up by Bonner. I like that Prince is really thinking about attacking. He's much more aggressive today. Hawkins got his feet tangled up, lost his shoe. Kentucky still got it. Hamilton matched up with Bogans. Good defensive stopper against the final wants to drive. This is four on five right now because Hawkins is out of it with no shoe on. And now he's trying to hustle back as Nelson's weaving around him. That's not not a good shot. Totally out of control. Prince with a rebound. Totally out of control, Brad. Trying to hustle back to steal the pass from Prince and can't get a hold of it. And now a timeout taken by Kentucky as Prince was kind of st stuck in front of his own bench by the defense. You know, last year, Tayshawn Prince, the player of the year in the SEC, if you take a look at it right now, Hawkins is going to lose his shoe. He's going to lose that shoe. Oh, oh, look what I left behind. That shoe's Hawkins. That shoe's Hawkins. Look, he said, I'm going to get my shoe on. I can't give him an advantage like that. I'm going to get that shoe on. Bill Knightley to find Trinus right there. Then he has to run back with it half on because yeah. Nelson was on the break and luckily missed that shot. The equipment guy, Mr. Knightley, what an institution he is at Kentucky. They love Mr. Knightley. 
So that's the last 30 second timeout for Kentucky. You know, Kentucky's been in five games that have gone right down to the wire. They're one in four in those games. They beat South Carolina. They haven't had players step up and make the big play late in the game. Talking about new shoes and Hawkins trying to get his back on. There's some new shoes in the Steve McLean family. He and his yeah. lovely wife Emily had Austin last Thursday. There's Steve, one What's of the up? great SIDs in the business, and we want to congratulate him and his lovely wife on Austin joining the crew. He's Seven up. pounds, five ounces, 19 inches long. McLean wow. likes that because Steve's not the tallest guy in the world, so he's kind of liking the fact <laughs> that his kid's showing a little bit of stretch to him and he overachieved in marriage his wife is a pediatric cardiologist well, wow, haven't, I think haven't she we all overachieved it? he carries i mean she carries that situation look at mr mclean hey brooks downing though does a great job as well there down in kentucky and he was sharing some tidbits with me and one is he said they can't wait for next year for antoine barber remember that name a junior college super coming to kentucky from wabash valley nine minutes left kentucky by one Look at his own right now. Florida going to make him think about the perimeter shot. Deshaun Prince kicks it outside to Fitch. Back inside. Estel working on Haslam. Missed the left hook. And now Haslam and Hayes go down. Oh, let's go. And that's going to go the other way as Haslam and oh, Hayes, the two big fellas, battle underneath. Possession. Alternate possession. As you see, Kamara sitting on the sideline. Ball goes inside. Now look at Haslam. It's going to challenge him. As Hestel with the miss, as Hassel with the tie up with Hayes. Hayes, really a warrior, really a tough, competitive kid on the inside. So, right now, Florida has an opportunity this trip down the floor to take the lead. You got to protect your home turf. When you lose games at home, and Kentucky's lost two now to Georgia and Alabama, I mean, that's tough. And the same here with Florida. They lost to Georgia here. They can't afford now to lose to Kentucky on their floor. Kentucky has out rebounded Florida 15 to 4 in this half. That means they're playing really aggressive, and they are. They came to play. If they only could make shots, life would be so much easier for that coaching staff. Here was the guy that was making shots early in the game, but again on the drive, he has it blocked. Prince, the outlet to Bogans against Hamilton. And that's his game. Get in the open court, use his driving ability. Nelson looks like he got hurt a little bit. I think his feelings are hurt. Three point Wildcat advantage. I'll tell you, when Bogans utilizes his driving ability, he's an effective scorer. And he helps that club go up a notch. So now, instead of having an opportunity to take the lead, a three pointer would tie it. Bonner, nice spin on the baseline. Didn't get the shot to drop, though. And it's Keith Bogans with a rebound. And nobody inside the rebound. Where's Haslam? Not around the glass. Nobody inside. Haslam's the leading rebounder in the conference. Wasn't there for that one. And now Kentucky by three. The Prince inside. Missed the hook. Estel trying to tip it in. And Prince comes out of the pile again. Nice pass inside. Oh, good Haslam read. Haslam with a steal. Good read by Haslam. Here's White on the break. Oh, I love the way he runs. What a transition player. He's got an elevator's body. He can really get up. He's a Skywalker. Jim and James. That cuts the lead to one. Oh, I'll tell you one thing, he can flat out fly. What a wide receiver that guy would be. I mean, he just flies up the floor. So that turnover forced by Haslam as they tried the inbounds to Estill turns into a Hamilton assist to number two. And he makes sure. I tell you, he's so explosive. Look at those legs. Look at that bounce. He's the elevator man. Up, up, and away. 54-53 with 7.19 left. Rivalry week on this Super Tuesday. It all started really over the weekend, continues all week long. Don't forget on Thursday in the Big Ten, Purdue and Indiana at 7 on ESPN. On ESPN 2 at 7, Maryland and Virginia will tangle in Charlottesville. And then back at 9 o'clock on ESPN, Duke and Carolina all Thursday. Part of rivalry week on ESPN. You know, it's really a shame. Purdue and Indiana are only playing once. So look here at the rebound totals. I mean, that's aggressive play by Kentucky. Almost a 5-1 to one ratio in the second half on the glass. Hey, when I think about Purdue and Indiana, you've got to play twice. Can you imagine if Duke and Carolina didn't play twice? Right. I mean, that's a no-no. They're going to do something in the Big Ten to keep those rivalries in existence. Halton shadowing Prince all the way up the court. But Tayshaun does a nice job on the handle. Got the commissioner here, Roy Kramer. He's ecstatic. Welcome at halftime. 
Likes the basketball this year in the SEC. Bogan's got a nice pick from Esco, forced a shot, and he did get a foul out of the deal. I think it's the best conference in basketball, followed by the Big 12, and the reason every game is so tough. When you look at the bottom, you look at clubs like Vanderbilt and Tennessee and Arkansas. Tell me they're easy. They're not easy, baby. Not Cupcake City. I thought you told me last night when we were in Big 12 country that the Big 12 was the best conference. Yeah, but you know I'm over here today. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the point I'm making. No, no, I didn't tell last night. I said SEC and, and the Big 12 to me are one-two, and I think the ACC is down there at number three. Bogan's first miss from the free throw line after hitting four straight in the first half. Got the second. Got to make those free throws late in the game. You got to make those free throws. Just under seven to go. Cats by two. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Located on the web at MBUSA.com. Back in Gainesville, James White going up high, but still it's the Gators who trail the Wildcats by two, 6.59 remaining in the ball game. A one point game at halftime, two points now with seven to go, and here's how the SEC East standings look. This is what we were talking about. Should Florida be able to win momentarily at least, they tied Georgia, who played tomorrow night for the top spot. Kentucky try to stay in the thick of it. When's the last time they were sub 500 in SEC play, which is what would happen should they lose tonight. They dropped to three and four in the conference. Well, in 12 years, I said the last 12 years, they haven't lost more than four games except one time in 99 when they lost five and were 11 and five. Florida playing better this half as far as taking care of the ball. They had 12 turnovers in the first half. They have zero in the second half as they almost turned it over right there. Kept alive, Lee. Nelson's got to make some shots for him now as you come down the stretch. The big player's got to step it up. That means Haslam on the inside and Nelson on the perimeter. Houghton for the shot clock. White's got a hoist one and he oh, dropped the wow. three. Wow, don't oh, allow wow. him to shoot that shot. They were in his face and he knocked it down. Florida in front by one. Bogans misses. Hayes double teamed inside. He threw it away. Now shot selection is so important. Understanding what a good shot is. Lee works it over to Nelson. Another triple. Gone. That was a good shot. Good ball reversal. They did a great job of swinging the basketball side to side. Nothing like two threes to give you momentum. Remember, Kentucky's out of quickie timeouts to try to slow down momentum. Six straight points. Tayshawn Prince tipped in by Esto. Nice tip in by Esto. Good play by Prince. I like the fact that he wanted the ball and wanted to attack the basket. Marquise has been kind of quiet. He's had some big games for them. Gators by two. Oh, watch that. Reach there. You got to be careful of reaching over the top. Nelson stripped from behind. There's the first turnover, and it's Bogan solo. Bogan's with the great steal. Bogan. Nelson with a bad play. Turned his back. That's a no-no. We're all tied up at 59. Three years in a row now. Kentucky's coming to this building and left with a loss. Three years in a row. Florida's gone to Kentucky and left with a loss. Kentucky won by one on their home floor last year. Florida won bigger in their ballgame. 94-86 here. They're going to have a tough time to try and beat Kentucky on senior day. It's going to be senior night. Wow, that place is something special down there. Now we're under five minutes tied at 59. They play my old Kentucky home. Estill. Trying to dish to Hayes and got it to him. Nice play by Esto. He read perfectly and reacted really in a positive way to find the open man. Three-pointer won't go. Lee trying to follow with a one-hand jam. That shot by Halton wasn't the greatest one I've seen tonight. No, he forced that shot. The shot wasn't available in their offense. Now he's trying to pick up the defense against Fitch. Prince. Try to save it, throws it away. Three on one, White again. Oh, there's Mr. White. I'll tell you, he's stepping up big time. Not a good play by Prince there. Trying to save that out of control like he did. Not a real heady play by Tayshawn. Not only that, I'm not sure that wasn't touched by Florida, which would not have made that an over and back, I don't think. And he just did what he thought he had to do. And in doing so, he threw it away. He tried to make a hustle play. So yeah. You can't fault the kid right. for that. 
But there's what it turned into. Turned into an easy win. This kid has got some high wire act, I'll tell you that. Lead down to two for Kentucky with four to go. Just seems like it gets tighter every minute. I'll tell you, Kentucky gets everybody's best hit as well because of that great tradition. The program's had so much success. Hawkins penetrates, dishes to Hayes. Charge. Charging call. Carl Hess with the call is a charging call. I'll tell you one thing, Tubby's kids have really come to play in this tough environment today. This man had his kids really ready to play. We understand. Tie of the ball game. The year Kentucky won the national championship in 98, they went 7-1 and one in games decided by five points or less. This year, in that same situation, they are 1-4 and four in games decided by five points or less. And that's because guys have not stepped up to make clutch plays at the end of the game. Guys have disappeared. In fact, in some of those games, Hawkins has tried to do it by himself, and guys like Prince and Bogans were nowhere to be found. The largest deficit on the other side that Florida's overcome this year to win was seven down against Temple. They trailed by eight in this half, 47-39. And right now we're dead even at 61. Don't forget Sports Center coming up following us. We'd like to get it to those guys at the end of regulation, but you never know. We may be here for a while. Put a double screen up on top, Bonner and Haslam. The right people got to shoot the ball now. You got to go inside Haslam, Bonner, and Nelson out on the perimeter. Nice movement around the perimeter to Nelson. Missed the three. And the rebound is all bogus. Now you want to take some time off. You want to be able to get the good shot right now. You got to think about Prince. You got to think about Bogans and his driving ability. Hawkins has to think about taking care of the ball. He got it down to Prince on the low block, and he'll have to bring it back out on top. Estel find Hayes underneath. I'll tell you, Hestel really passing the ball well. And he's getting it to Hayes. Yes, he is, and Hayes really free inside. Hayes has been solid tonight. He's nothing special in terms of his offensive ability, but his presence has given him toughness. He's got a career high, Dick. Ten points for Hayes in his a, first start. That's a big plus. Hasler. That's a big time move. Hasler was afraid to follow, and he took it right to the goal with authority, showing why he's the premier post player in the SEC. Two and a half and change at 63-63. I told you we're going to have a mailbox fashion this to Chris inside is fouled out on the baseline. I think it's going to be Haslam, but let's wait for Gerald Boudreaux's call. It is. That's his third foul. This game may come down to the last possession. Who has the ball in their hands? They go inside. Watch Haslam. Great move inside. Good drop step. Excellent drop step, and he finishes very strong. They're going to look again. Defense attacks him. And he gets that drop step and explodes to the goal. Tayshaun Prince at the free throw line. Not always perfect from there. And he shows it on that one. He's a 64% free throw shooter. He's got to elevate that late in the game here. This one could give them the lead. They were perfect in the first half from the line as a team 6 for 6. And he got the second on the roll. 17 for Tayshaun Prince. It's a one-point cat lead. Well, you know, Tayshawn and I think Bogans today have really played solid games. Bogans hasn't shot well, exceptionally well, but he's attacked the basket. Both guys really have stepped up tonight. Haslam looking for Bonner. He had him and missed him. You got to know when to give it all. Hamilton to Green, 15 on the shot clock, 2.10 to play. Looking for a pick. Haslam kind of gave Green a moving one. And then it's stolen away by Hayes. And Hayes again showing his defensive effectiveness. Only the second turnover of the half for Florida couldn't have come at a more costly time. It's amazing to think they only got two turnovers. Prince almost took the three. Now he will. Rebound. Who else? Hayes. But he's tied up by Nelson going to the floor. That's going to be Kentucky's ball. And Hayes deserves to have the ball his way. How tough he's playing. They really found a guy to give him a lot of positive minutes now on the inside. And Hayes. There he is with the steal. He's got 10 points and six rebounds for the former All-State football player out of Modesto, California. He's playing like he's got pads on tonight. And I'll tell you one thing, he did a great job early in this game to neutralize Haslam. Haslam only was one for two in the first half, and he defended him. Look at the rebound totals. Wow. 
Sometimes that can confuse you, though. Florida had a 30-point rebound advantage over Arkansas over the weekend, and they lost. I know. That was amazing. That's why it could be very deceiving. Fans come to life with 140 left. I see the zone right now. Big possession for Kentucky. Oh, all the Cat fans notice a big possession. The Gator fans trying to make them confused with noise. Bogan's got a three. Okay, what a big one. What a big one. Psychologically, that's got to give him a great lift. Tell Bogan's me. 20 points for Bogan's. Timeout, Florida. I'll tell you, he responded to the fact that he sat on the bench to start the game. He got motivated by Mr. Smith. When he squares his body and gets the great look at the goal on top of the circle, he can knock this down. Third three-pointer of the second half for Keith Bogans. Kentucky fans have been waiting and waiting and waiting for him to start to do that. I tell you, Tubby, you should have seen him react. Look at Tubby right there. He knows that's a monster one. Hey, look at him. He said, I love it. I love it. Look at him. I mean, has he got his heart and soul in it? What a passion. I think maybe he ought to just throw that shirt instead of taking it to the cleaners. Just get rid of it, man. With his dollar, Six, dollars, he go out and buy a new wardrobe. 67, 63. Still a lot of time left, but... Kentucky with a four-point lead. This would be a great win for these kids from Kentucky to go on a road. This makes up a little bit for that loss at home to Alabama. Still a lot of hoops left. See, right now, Bonner's got to get some looks. They haven't gotten to him at all. Bonner only has nine points. He almost took a three there. They lob it down low. Haslam draws a lot of blue jerseys, and Green wraps a three. I'll tell you, Green would be the fifth option in that offense. Finish. Here we go, Mailbox time. Estill trying to set a pick for Prince. The floater's good by Tayshawn Prince. That's, that's what the Stars have to do, step up. And that time he wanted the rock in his hands, and it was a P.T. Pierre. Prince with 19, Bogans with 20. The crowd quieted momentarily. It's a three-point game with 38 seconds left. Now you got to think about Nelson and his three-point shooting ability. Gonna have to think three, take it to the goal, and that's what he's doing here. And a whistle. It's gonna be a foul on Estill. If it is, it's his fourth as Haslam tried to drive that baseline, and it is Marquise Estill's fourth foul. We've had a good one here tonight, Brad Nestler. A good one. Two quality teams playing really tough on a defensive end. That's not an easy shot to make. Over Bonner, and he had to float it. He couldn't use the glass, and you're in a kind of a no man's land, about eight feet from the hoop, but he dropped it in. You know what's really good news for the Kentucky yeah. fans right there is Haslam misses that free throw. The last two possessions, who had scored for him? The one two punch yep. of Bogans and, and Prince. Prince. They have responded. The coaching staff loves what they've seen. Free Both. throws killed Florida against Arkansas. They probably could have won that game in overtime. Tonight, Udonis Haslam's done his job, but he missed that last one, and he missed both of them. Going to the floor. The scramble's on. Prince has got it. And he's fouled in the backcourt by Nelson. He makes these free throws now, and it becomes really tough for Florida to get out of here with a W. Those two free throws, big misses by Haslam, who's been effective all night on a free throw line. So a three-point game. It's going to be, even if he only hits one, a two-possession game. This will be the first time that Florida loses to lose three in a row since 97-98. Look at this guy's heart and soul in every possession. You can see he feels it. Tayshawn Prince at the line. He has hit two of four tonight. I'll tell you, the big two. And again. Oh, big miss right there. But I told you, the free throw shooting by both teams has been suspect from their big time Simon players. Florida. And Tayshawn Prince just left the door open for Florida. He knows it. He's worked hard. He's tired. And that one rimmed out on him. And he's only two out of five from the strike. Sports Center coming up in a little less than 22 seconds. Carl and Rich will be along. Of course, it was Super Bowl Media Day. Everybody out there asking the question about who's going to start a quarterback for New England. And Bill Belichick will have the final answer for everybody tomorrow afternoon. Mike Tyson's going to have to look for somewhere else to fight. 
the NBA All-Stars that will be there and the guys that should be and didn't make it. That's what Carl and Rich have coming up on SportsCenter 21.6 seconds from now. This is what we wanted. We got it. <laughs> yeah, we wanted a close game, but we got ourselves a close game after the blowout last night. Right now, strategically, you look at Kentucky. I know we get back to that story again. Do you allow them to shoot the three and get the tie, or do you foul and maybe make them make the two and you get the ball out of bounds? If you do that, you certainly got to wait until it gets the five or six seconds on that clock. If you're right now, certainly Florida, you got to think about your three-point shooters, and they got guys that can knock those down with Bonner and Nelson. And if you're Tubby Smith, he's talking about matching up with those guys and not allowing them the good look for the three. So it's all come down to the last 21 seconds. Dick talked about Florida. The last time they've lost three in a row was a long time back, it seems. 97-98. Alabama, Kentucky, and South Carolina. In a stretch of February that was tough on them. Well, you know, right now, if you're Florida, you come on the floor. If I'm Kentucky and they run some time down to that clock, I would think about not allowing them to get a look at that three because they're so effective out there from the three. And if you're Kentucky, you don't want to go overtime on the road because the advantage goes to the home team usually. Huge rebounding advantage. In the half for Kentucky. Oh, they've been dominant. That means you're playing aggressive basketball, and that's a tribute to Tubby Smith. His kids really responded after that loss from Alabama. Now Kentucky and Tubby Smith wants aggressive defense. Billy Donovan is looking for three more points to send this game to an extra session. Well, right now you got Bogans on Nelson, who's a three-point shooter. You got Bonner out here. There's an open lane for Green. He had to take it. He got the layup. And now you got to think of steal and foul right away. Could have fouled Tayshawn Prince. They foul Bogans instead. Haslam does. They tried, I think, to foul Tayshawn, and he got rid of it to Bogans. Four to foul is number 50. Donis Haslam. Bogans tonight is five out of six from the free throw line, but he liked Prince right around that 64, 65 percent from the stripe. Yeah, wide open right here. You see the big hole goes right to the goal green. Nobody challenges him. They were out, extended, trying to play for the three. Got to make these free throws right now. This is pressure, but you're an experienced player. You got to get out. And it's in and out. That leaves the opportunity for Florida with 10.1 seconds, regardless of whether this one goes down or not. They got a shot. That's all they can ask for right now. He said it would come down in the last. He missed the ball. Goal. Florida with a chance to win on this trip. Nelson taking it on the inside. The jumper, no good. Three seconds left. Kentucky's got the ball and a nice clear out by Hawkins. Kentucky will survive it unless there was a whistle call down on the baseline. See right there, poor job by Florida. You're only one point down. You got to go inside to the big guy there in that possession. There was a foul called, so they're walking it down. Carl has called a foul on the baseline. Tayshawn Prince is the guy that's talking to him I don't know if the foul was on Tayshawn I never did see the official the call there's Nelson right now see right in that possession yeah they rushed it too quickly you got to get something going offensively could have got the ball inside the Haslam the foul I guess was on Bonner so Hawkins goes to the line and he drains it you got to really play solid defense here not much that Florida can do that would point seven on a clock now it's going to take about a, a miracle 70 80 foot shot here whether this free throw goes or not. 0.7 seconds. And just right to waste time. Bonner throws it the length of the court. And Kentucky's won. What a great win for Tubby Smith and Kentucky. There's two old friends. Now they're friends again, but it's going to be bittersweet for Billy Donovan at home because they have lost their third straight game. And Kentucky, a huge win on the road. 70 to 68 the final Kentucky over Florida so Kentucky stays in the hunt in the SEC East that's going to wrap it up from Gainesville in the O-Dome for Dick Vitale and our ESPN crew I'm Brad Nestler this has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports Rich and Carl standing by with SportsCenter